Skateboarding advice. That's what this video is about and that's what the title says. So let's talk a little bit about skateboarding. So today I got five things that I want to talk about with you guys. And number one is the performance plateau. Have you ever had this occurrence where you're trying to learn a trick and you're making some progress but then all of a sudden you hit this this wall, this cease in improvement and it's called the performance plateau where you're just not making any progress. And you're putting in the work, you're trying to learn the trick, you're trying to figure it out and you're practicing at it, but you're not making any progress. Why is that happening? It's so discouraging and frustrating and I don't know, sometimes it just makes you want to give up, right? Do not let the performance plateau discourage you or unmotivate you because I have some good news for you and that is that just because you cannot see any observable performance with your eyeballs does not mean that you're not learning. So why is this happening to me? Why am I in this limbo, stuck zone in the plateau space, whatever? You are in the in-between zone of two phases of acquiring certain aspects of that skill. So you're kind of like trying to unlock a new item in Legend of Zelda that enables you to get to a certain dungeon or whatever. Like there's something that you don't have yet that that skill requires or that trick requires that you're developing still neuromuscularly on, on a subconscious level that's too complicated for even to see in the observable performance whatever. The point is is that you are making progress, you are learning so don't think that you're not getting anywhere you're getting somewhere, you just gotta hold on. That's why when you're working on the trick you just gotta keep trying different things, new movements until it finally just clicks. And When it clicks that is the best thing in the world. I feel like I had one of the worst performance plateaus with backside 360s. Man, this trick took me so long. It took me years to learn. Years. I was just practicing. I remember one day just thinking like, I put in like so much work for this trick and it's not getting anywhere. I didn't cry. But that's how I was feeling. Like, it sucks. I was just like, come on, why? it doesn't make any sense. I'm working hard at this trick and I should be seeing performance increase and more consistency, but I wasn't getting anywhere. And I was just like bummed. But I kept doing it anyways because I thought, all right, well, maybe one day I'll get it. And then one day, it was like half a year ago, it just clicked, it clicked. And I just had it like almost every try and now I have them. So I, I feel really good about that. So don't give up, prove it to yourself that you can plow through the performance plateau and get that trick. The next piece of advice I have for you is about learning switch. And it was really hard for me to learn switch because I already had all the regular tricks. So it was really like boring and frustrating to learn to skate switch because it was like learning to ride with my left hand. Even to just ride was like annoying and hard because I couldn't do it. I couldn't even ride switch. Can you believe that? So here's my advice to you about learning how to skate switch. You know how they say the best way to learn a language is just if you're thrown into that foreign country and you're forced to speak that language? Well, apply that same concept to skating with switch. The best way you're going to learn how to skate switch is you can just dive into a lifestyle of switch skating, skate for the whole day, only switch, ride around everywhere switch, pick up groceries for grandma, you skate switch. All the tricks that you're trying, just switch, try it for days, maybe even a week, and then doing that will force you to learn how to skate switch. And it'll be easier because when you skate switch for a whole day, you kind of like, it doesn't feel as uncomfortable because you're not comparing it to regular. I think switch feels uncomfortable more when you compare it to your regular. So if you're skating regular and then you're skating switch, it feels a little less, feels a little, more, feels a little bit more uncomfortable because you're comparing it to your regular. But if you're skating only switch, you feel more confident and you're just gonna get used to it faster. So just go all out and switch. And that's why when people hurt their ankles and, they have, and they're forced to skate switch, that's how they get so good at switch. And that's how it is. So instead of hurting your ankle, just only skate switch for like a day or a week and then like balance it off. You don't have to be switch for the rest of your life, but I mean, you can if you want to. Being able to push with both your legs can actually really come in handy because if you want to skate like a long distance, you just like switch off every 10 pushes with your legs. I don't know how this represents pushing. <laughs> I did this music video for a guy named John Hopkins, a DJ, where I had to skate for like so many miles across different landscapes. And throughout the music video, you'll see that I'm like switching stances. And uh, I don't know if they ever found out or if they noticed, but yeah, it came in handy. I don't know, I don't know what I would have done if I could only skate regular because my legs would be so sore. They're like, man, you've been skating for a long time. You're not tired? I'm like, no, nah, I'm all right. Like, it's because I was skating switch. And one more thing. Skating switch can make your shoes last twice as long. Twice as long. That's a lot of money you can save on shoes. Use that as your motivation to skate switch. All right, my third piece of advice for you is the placebo effect. So if there's ever a day where you need maximum performance in your skateboarding, like you're skating a contest or you're trying to go out and film a special trick, 
or you're just trying to impress Stacy's mom or something like that, what you want to do is you want to wear your favorite shirt, your favorite pants, your favorite bracelet, anything that's going to make you feel more confident about yourself because somehow, as wacky as it sounds, there's some kind of crazy psychological effect that just makes you skate way better when you just like the way you look. I know it, it sounds really like weird and cheesy, but <laughs> this works so much. Like every time I need to skate good, like I wear my favorite stuff. And of course, I feel like the opposite effect takes place when you're wearing something you don't like. Like if I'm wearing a shirt that's too small or something, or I have some kind of shoe that's like bulky, and I don't, I don't know, this just doesn't feel right. It really messes with my head, and I have some crazy OCDs. Like if I'm missing a bolt in my board, or like, oh, I have one weird OCD, like when the sun is in a position where it makes my shadow like long, I feel so uncomfortable skating, and like I, I just feel like tall and unbalanced and like opposite effect takes place when the shadow is really small I feel really on point so I don't know it's weird Maybe, I hope I'm not the only one that has that OCD right? my fourth piece of advice to you is to utilize the notes app on your phone use it because it's really helpful I remember I used to like sit in class and think of all these amazing tricks that I wanted to try and then when I got to the skate park I'd be like what did I want to try again so what I do now is I write all the tricks that I want to try in my phone. I write like techniques that I try to remember when I learned a certain trick. I write down video ideas. I write down tricks to film. Like just use your phone, use it. For my last piece of advice, I am going to tell you the secret to all double flipping tricks. Double kick flips, switch double flip, double heel flips, you name it. This applies to all the double flips. The secret to double kick flips is torque. No, not twerk. Torque. Torque is a measure of how much force is required to act on that object in order to rotate that object. What mostly determines this force is the lever arm or the radius from the axis of rotation, which is right in the center because it's kick flipping like this, and the force applied or the, the line of force applied. What also determines it is the angle of the force applied, but we're not going to pay attention to that. The main thing is this distance right here. Basically, if you applied force, from a greater distance from the axis of rotation, you will have a greater amount of force or less amount of force is required. That's why doorknobs are not placed close to the center of the axis of rotation of the door. It's very on the edge, so people can push the door or pull it without much effort. So if you want to flip your board faster, you want your force to be applied on the very edge of the board. Now, this doesn't mean you have to set up your feet with your toenails hanging off, but you definitely want to aim for the edge of the board. I felt that this was the most significant thing in helping me learn how to double flip. Although there are many other things, but this is just what clicked for me. So maybe you should try it out and maybe it'll work. Thank you guys for listening to me talk about skateboarding stuff. I hope we can chat again soon. Subscribe to the next page, like if you like the video, and uh, thanks for hanging out. See you guys.